So I'm Tina Woods, uh, CEO of Collider Health and Longevity International and the director of the APPG for Longevity. I'm Jeff Filkin, do lots of things in the Lords and especially in ageing and healthy ageing. You guys put together quite a report, 92 pages of very specific cross-sector, cross-government action. What are you most excited about after all of this effort, nine months plus? I'm most excited about the potential for really initiating a movement to make a huge difference to people's lives. That's what I'm most excited about because in nine short months, we have mobilized the most unbelievable array of organizations, experts, scientists, business leaders, third sector, NHS. It's just been quite incredible. So it just shows what can be achieved when you, you uh, unite around a, a goal that everyone can sign up to, want to make a difference to the world. And what about you, Jeff? Well, it helps to achieve what Tina said, which I totally agree with, if you have two people that are completely mad and are very good at uh, convening, <laughs> collaborating, uh, and engaging other people to work with us. I think for me, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm just optimistic that we're going to get traction on this. Because what the Secretary of State for Health said, he reminded us this is a manifesto commitment. We had a number of people being explicit that this was an enormously uh, powerful contribution towards thinking and policy. We've heard explicit statements before, though. Is this the government that's going to really galvanize everyone across all these levels and, and get the action that we need to really move the needle on all of this? So I would say we need the government on side, and of course they're a huge part of this and are critical to get on board. Um, I would say that it, it will take all stakeholders in society, and most importantly the citizens ourselves. I mean, we're all in it together. So I think that's a, the biggest challenge, though. We need to really galvanize the local, you know, the, the local populations and national, national populations uh, in, in, in achieving our goal. But what are the levers that you can deploy next week, next month, in, over the next 15 years, shooting for that healthy life expectancy gain of five years? What are the levers you can start pulling right away? You know, the report's out there, everybody's excited about it, so what needs to happen almost immediately? Well, I think the immediate focus for the next uh, few weeks will be trying to land it with number 10 such that they actually recognize that there are, there are great benefits to them putting their name and their weight behind this goal. It's a manifesto commitment, so I think our report shows that it's very important and that it's possible to make a significant difference. And that's, I think, what politicians need to hear, that you could actually make some success here. So that's the first goal, but there are plenty of others which I'll, we, we can speak to in a minute. Your ambitions feed very nicely into the overall government uh, ambition to rebalance society. The social fabric, it's a bit tattered around the edges and in the middle. So how, how, do, how would you like government to approach that uh, with, with the urgency that's required to get the job done? Uh, so, we've heard a lot about levelling up. Of course, that's what the government needs to do and are talking about already. We hear it from Matt Hancock and, of course, Boris Johnson and, and all the you know, leading figures in government now. So, we know it's top of their agenda. So, in some ways, our report has come at a fantastic time because, of course, in a sense, we've got the recipe to really deliver on that. Um, but I think uh, on top of that, though, we have to remember that this is a, a, a whole society movement that we're talking about. So government is a critical stakeholder, but it is the, the role of business, NHS, third sector, you know, we've, a scientist, you know, it's, 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 it's a pan, pan society sort of movement that really we're talking about. What will success look like then in the, the coming years all the way down that runway to 2035? Well, success would look like a very powerful governmental white paper that um, spelt out why this mattered and that they were committed to doing most of the things that we think are fundamental. But it would also uh, look like uh, developing in conversations with the business community that they recognised they had to be part of the solution and not the problem and putting very strong uh, messages and metrics around showing how they're going to do that and that we had similar discussions at local level with local NHS and local authorities that they both know that this was important which they largely do but that they actually had to regalvanize themselves around how to make a difference hopefully picking up our focuses of those four very specific changes. Lord Filkin, oh, Tina Woods would you like to add something? 
one, one thing. Um, so I think what would be spectacular, and this is wearing my sort of scientific hat uh, as well as the NHS hat, I think it would be lovely, uh, as, and this would really show that we are on to something, is if we, can, if, if, if we start seeing headlines in the national press about us being able to close down hospitals because we are keeping so well and healthy. That would be amazing. Um, the other thing too, of course, is if we are, were able through the sheer uh, potential of data, uh, scientific research, digital biomarkers, aging biomarkers, to be able to find a cure for dementia. That would be fantastic indeed. And, and I know that you, that would be fantastic indeed. And I know that there's been some very promising developments that you can tell us about uh, just in the, in the past few days. Oh yes, so abs absolutely. So yesterday, the um, uh, Alzheimer's Research uh, UK, uh, together with the Bill Gates Foundation, announced a huge project, which is extremely exciting, uh, using a smartwatch uh, and AI to actually look at um, uh, all the sort of uh, things that are happening in our daily lives: sleep, gait analysis, all these sorts of things. You know, all the things outside, you know, the, uh, the NHS sort of setting, which uh, potentially could uh, identify um, uh, what puts us at risk of uh, de dementia, but also all these other chronic diseases of aging and most importantly what we can actually do about it because despite billions being poured in by the pharmaceutical industry to look at a cure for dementia we haven't had any real positive news yet but with the significant promise of all these new technologies we are very 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 soon there to be able to understand what could actually make it happen. Thank you so much Tina Woods and Lord Filkin, the co-leaders and the co-authors of the report, The Health of the Nation, a national strategy for healthier, longer lives. Thanks so much.